And then all of a sudden I saw the smoke and I was like, yep, spraying oil everywhere. Oh, come on. Oh no. that didn't have cabs, although when I finally got up there, we all had cabs. Um, 
Like there was, they, they weren't the nice cabs that we have today. And uh, uh, but it, it didn't matter at that age. Being able to run a tractor was, you felt almost like you were at the top of the world. Uh, I did run that Minneapolis uh, U Special that was uh, shown on the last video, or last couple of videos, and uh, that one doesn't have a cab. It had, actually for a while, it had one of these buggy uh, uh, umbrellas uh, on it for a while, uh, but it finally just shook apart. And so I just ran it without it. But I spent a lot of acres running around picking rocks with the rock picker with that hole in it, standing up because of the wheel was so hard to turn uh, because there was no power steering. And uh, when it caught something, you had to hold on to it. And then you had to turn it around to run over to this rock and then turn it over to catch this rock. And, and uh, so you were constantly turning and sitting down and turning that wheel was hard to do so you pretty much just end up standing on the back so but uh would i allow a young one to do it now probably not but that's just the way a lot of things were run back then uh, the survival of the quickest is probably what it was but anyway um i'm just about done for the evening uh, make a couple more passes and then I'm going to take this old carcass back to the barn. The tractor will stay in the field. And I'm back, and I got some sleep, so that's good. I don't do very good without sleep, so it was probably better for me to just go ahead and nap a little bit and then uh, get back out of here. That way I won't be wrapping a boom around a power pole anytime soon. A little bit of a breeze this morning. I know it's gonna turn into a nasty wind, so I'm getting going here. Just gotta fill up, get back in the field where I left off last night. And we'll keep rolling, but it's a little cold. Like mid 30s, it used to be hot. Now it's cold, it used to the 60s, that's nice. So I pulled back up in the yard, checked the main filter, it was good. Went ahead and washed my windows off. Uh, but I was looking at some of these filters. And as you can see, it's all white. It's covered in that Spartan stuff. And I think it's blocking the flow. It's doing exactly what I was afraid it was gonna do. These little screens. I think I'm just gonna take them all off and spray without them. The only reason for these screens is just so that your nozzles don't plug because there's a little teeny hole in there. 
At this point, I would rather deal with a couple of these, maybe just slightly plugging and seeing the, the, the fan going, and I have a little tool I can use to clean them out, plus an air nozzle on this truck, versus changing these screens like every 200 acres of, of spray. So I'm gonna pull all these out, just take them out, put the caps back on. We'll spray without screens. That way I know I'm not dealing with plug. Because there's no way for me to know what screens are plugged in this thing. I, I don't know if that nozzle's plugged, if that one's not. Beats me. There's no way to tell the flow other than just your main flow meter on your line. But it could be different on each nozzle. So that's a situation I don't want to encounter again because we had that happen last year. Not worth it. So take them off. Sounds good. Well, my fear was proven right. Look at this. It's random. Some of them are just thick and covered and some of them aren't. Uh, I had some larger screens in there that are bigger openings. Those ones didn't plug because it can flow through those. Those fine screens, it can't. And uh, that's not good because that means probably some of that stuff I sprayed just a little bit ago probably has similar what happened last year where some of these nozzles were over applicating and others were under applicating. I'm glad I caught it now. I got about a thousand acres left of piece of spray, so um, we'll run it without these. But I'm good to go now. I'll go back to the field and uh, keep spraying. Well, the wind's really starting to howl again. Really bad. It's uh, sustaining about 30 miles an hour, gusts up to 50. That is just not good spraying conditions. I just went in this field. This is some of the later stuff we planted in the peas. Well, more the middle. <laughs> And uh, there's quite a bit of time left, I think. It's not its not like that earlier stuff that scared me. Uh, this stuff's got a couple days left before it starts getting to the top. So I'm gonna not spray any more peas today. Tomorrow should be a lot better day. I'll finish the peas out tomorrow. And that way uh, we won't have uh, drift over applicating certain areas of the land, so. Just got a call from Brad and uh, the tarp on the truck is coming off and he's trying to hold it down. He's basically the only thing holding that tarp off coming off the truck and he needs a hand. Problem is I'm like five miles from him. So I'm gonna quickly wing this thing up and uh, he's just gonna hold it as long as he can. And I'm gonna race over there with the brute and help him put that tarp back on that thing. Cause uh, yeah, we don't wanna rip the tarp off. And it's unfortunate cause I'm almost done with this field. But that's just how it goes. I'll come back down here. That's what's nice about having a sprayer that can go 50 miles an hour. Doesn't take long to get places. Uh, okay, there. Yeah, he was hanging on the end of it, and uh, if he would have got off that tarp, would have went over the top. Uh, just uh, unraveled it on the wrong side of the wind direction. There's on one side, and the wind's blowing, you can always open and unclose the tarp. That was the wrong side, but that's okay. Fortunately, he hung on to it like, like a beast, kept it down, and uh, yeah, I was able to save it, so that's good. Now I'm gonna go back to the field. I got 300 gallons left and a little bit of a field to finish down there. And then I'm shutting down spraying because it is still howling. I just wanted to get that field done for those guys so that way they have enough acres to seed while I'm not spraying. And then I'll pick up tonight when the wind dies down. Plus I'm hungry, it's time to eat. So due to the wind, I went ahead and parked the sprayer. I'm just gonna call it quits for the afternoon until things calm down tonight. It's supposed to go down a little bit, so I'll finish the peas, or at least get started back on the peas when that happens. But the field I was spraying, it's just a lot of rocks in it, big rocks, a lot. That'd be kind of a real pain to hand pick. If I had a lot of time and a pick up with another buddy, we'd drive around and hand pick them all. But at this point, I've got some time this afternoon because everyone's man in the vehicle except for me. So I think I'm gonna fire up the Magnum, 7140 Case IH Magnum, and I'm gonna hook up to our rock picker, just quickly service it, make sure everything's good to go, haul off down the road, and uh, go pick that field. Because, uh, But before anything, I'm gonna jump in the Defender Pro. Let's go over and take a look at the rock picker because I want to know if the tires are flat on it before I drive over there. And if the tires are flat, then I'll go get the air tank and uh, we'll fill them up when I bring the tractor over. But I really don't feel like driving the tractor over there to find out that the tire's flat, then drive the tractor back to grab air, to then drive the tractor back over and hook up and air the tires. Makes sense.
Good to go. That's, uh, I got plenty of air in those tires, so we'll make it. You guys didn't know we have another uh, farm equipment piece in this farm. We don't use a whole lot, but it's this backhoe right here. Okay, let's go get the tractor. Let's hook onto that thing. Here we go. Got an old right way rock picker. Bought it at an auction a long time ago. It's not pretty. It was well used when we bought it and we fixed it up a little bit, but it's still well used. But you know what? It'll throw rocks in the bucket. It'll toss them out in the back. So you, it does what it needs to do. And we don't do enough rock picking, honestly, but thanks to my grandpa, my dad, my great uncle, all these individuals, my uncles, everyone who's worked on this farm. There's a lot of people that have picked rocks over the years and they've really uh, eliminated a lot of work for us to do. But this field that I'm going to, we bought about six, seven years ago. Well, actually bought it more than that. And uh, we picked like at least 12 or 15 rock truck loads off of it. And there's still more on these knolls. There's these rocky knolls in the field and they just, rocks keep coming out of them. It's unreal. So the bunch of big ones are exposed. And if I don't do this now, then it won't get done for like another two years because there's gonna be crop on it and there could be crop on it next year. So I better get on it. And uh, you know, who doesn't like picking rocks? Maybe that millennial farmer guy? Yeah, they don't have rocks in Minnesota. They go down probably 10, 15 feet like this. And they just keep working themselves up. We picked this and picked this and picked this. So I'm gonna pick it again. size rock wind has died down it's still probably blowing as you can probably hear but it's not 35 miles an hour it's probably more like 15 to 20 miles an hour so that means with the daylight left I better get spraying so go back to that so I guess I'll mix up a batch for the peas and go try to knock out another 213 acres of peas and then uh, we'll see if I want to do any more tonight I like spraying in the daylight so I don't know if I'll go later real late but tomorrow's supposed to be a beautiful day I'll be able to finish everything now. Oh, whoo! Just finished peas. 1,802 acres. And I've got 35 gallons of chemical left in the tank. That's pretty good. I mixed it out really close. I was expecting to have either a lot less or a lot more, so good. Ah, all right, I'm gonna go home, clean the filters in this thing. I'm gonna eat, because I haven't eaten, and then, uh, Get this thing ready to start pre-spraying again because I gotta get out of those drills because they are still going. And it is beautiful outside, but I'm stuck in the sprayer. I can still look out the windows. Looks good. And that right there is how much fuel I burnt to do 1,300 acres. Looks like about a little bit, about a half tank. I was live streaming and I took the corner and uh, it kept driving straight as I kept turning the steering wheel. I was like, uh, okay, steering column broke. No, I probably lost hydraulics. And then all of a sudden I saw the smoke and I was like, yep, spraying oil everywhere. So I stopped, shut it down, ended the live stream and uh, it just kept running oil out. I couldn't stop it. 
and it finally slowed down. I put a hose clamp over a bubble wrap plastic bag that I had in there, tightened it up, and it's just dripping barely right now. I got someone coming, and I'll take the hose off and try to make one, but we're dead in the water. This thing isn't going anywhere tonight, and I need to get the spraying done. So this has got to get fixed right now. Brute, why? Why, man? We'll get it fixed, not a big deal. Okay, the guys showed up and um, we don't have probably the right fitting to make this work in the shop uh, and everything's closed so we won't be able to get things made in the morning. Anyways, we're gonna go scrounge in the shop and see if we can find something that'll work. Maybe to get it hooked up just to get it back to the shop, but chances are it's not gonna be moving tonight. Oh, it's sprayed oil all the way back here, holy cow. All right, got some tools. We'll uh, get the front. We're gonna take it off. We don't have the right fittings to get it fixed, but we do have a splice kit, so we could we could splice that section out and make it run tonight. But there's a chance. I mean, it's getting dark anyways. We're gonna be spraying anymore. We might as well just uh, could wait till morning too and run in real quick to the parts store and have them make a hose. So but we'll get it off, look at it, and yeah. see what the damage is. Yeah. If anybody is out there that can loan us a sprayer tonight, yeah. Go yeah, ahead and be, give us a call yeah. or the right fittings. Big brood down. Or the hose. Yeah. <laughs>